Do you feel like you were always doing what you wanted to do musically? No. Okay. But like at the same time, I, because of when my drinking started and started to become like a priority for me, if you had asked me what I wanted to do instead, I probably wouldn't have been able to give you a clear answer for that. So like, you know, other personalities in the band that were like more assertive than me started to sort of take control and I didn't know how to negotiate that. So I just fucking retreated, mm -hmm. you know, I get that and did the whole, okay, well, I just don't care. Yeah. You know, I, I affected that even though it wasn't true, mm -hmm. you know, I still do that. I still do that too. <laughs> I still do that too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So around what age would you say your drinking started to get really bad or around like what time? It progressed pretty fast for me because I, I didn't drink at all in high school. Oh, uh, you're one of those. <clears throat> I'm one of those. Uh -huh. And uh, so I didn't start drinking until we were on tour. And when you're a band on tour, it's everywhere. Yeah, every day. You know, everywhere, every day. And you almost feel like you have an obligation, you know? Mm -hmm. Um not that that sounds like I'm blaming it on something else. I'm not. I, from the second I, you know, ingested alcohol, I just really loved the way it made me feel and resolved to feel that way as much as possible. Yep. So, um, but it didn't help or hurt that it was everywhere and I could get it whenever I wanted. And, you know, that was, that was part of it. So by the end of the tour for our first record, We'd been out for like a year and a half and like my drinking was worrying my band members and crew <laughs> to mm -hmm. the point where they talked to our manager and said, Max is a problem. Like he's, he's got a problem, you know, and it's bad. <clears throat> um, you know, I was, it was on that tour that I, I, was you know lying on my back throwing up in my oh. in my sleep oh, no. um i was with like my ex-girlfriend who tried to wake me up and she couldn't wake me up um she managed to turn me over onto my side but that's one of those things where like if she hadn't been there yeah i'd probably be dead you right. know um so that was already happening on that first tour oh my god so like so basically our manager did a thing that i've never heard of any other manager do uh, which is crazy. And I, he's, he passed away a few years ago, but like, I'll always respect him for it. He was like, you can either finish this run sober or I'm bringing you home. Mm. And I said, well, there's no way I'm fucking doing this sober. Like I literally can't do this sober. So like, there's your answer. And I think I knew I wouldn't be able to lie because this had sort of come from my band members to him. So we canceled um, I think a, Euro a European tour. Oh we canceled God. like a bunch of stuff. I came home, was sober for like 10 days, yeah. then then back. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was, it got problematic very quickly for me and it got worse mm -hmm. uh, predictably yeah. as, as it continued. And I stopped... I stopped in 06. So I had a very short run of drinking. Yeah. Because um, it started in what, like 97, 98? Yeah. Yeah. And ended in 06. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's pretty lucky to, yeah. you know, only go that long. But, yeah. But obviously it proves how progressive yeah. the disease is of alcoholism. I yeah. mean, I was like blackout drinker from the beginning. Yeah. Like I was like, this is fucking awesome. I don't feel anything. This Same. This is great. I yeah. remember having that feeling the day after the first time I, I got drunk, the morning after, after throwing up in the sink, whatever hotel I was in and thinking, I don't remember what happened last night and, and thinking, this is living. Yes. Like, I'm mean, Yeah. this is cool. Totally. Yeah. Like, finally, I can breathe, you know? Finally, I can breathe. Finally, I have, yeah, like I have, I have an out, yep. you know, I have, I have recourse. Like as long as I have this 
substance. I can go anywhere in the world. I can do anything. Yes, totally. Like nothing can touch me. Nothing can touch me. Yeah, I felt the same way. And in a way, I feel like it sort of helped me to get to where I am Mm -hmm. because I had such a fuck it attitude and I truly didn't care what anyone else like thought of me yeah. or so I thought, you know, and then I was just able to like do things like you go on the took radio, risks like that just, served you. Yeah, yeah. You know, and same for you too, <laughs> like being able to go out there and be like a crazy performer. Mm-hmm. And I also think that like, we're, we had one time where we had a, the best time in the whole world getting fucked up. Mm-hmm. And for the rest of our drinking or using careers, we we're chasing that same one time yeah. like forever. Yeah. And we can never capture it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's insane. Totally. Well, it's literally insane, isn't it? Li- it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It fucking is. Um, so at what so you guys broke up in two thousand four for a yeah. while. And then at what point were you like, you know what, I wanna get the band back together and keep doing this? We broke up, yeah, in around oh four. Um I got sober in 06 um i think it was in like i'd probably had a year or so of sobriety when our old drummer <clears throat> was like you know we have a lot of fans still mm-hmm. like we have this thing that we built that you know, most people who sling guitars don't ever get let's let's do it you know <clears throat> And I, even at a year of sobriety, I was like, I don't think I can do this sober. Totally. You know, even a year in. Yep. And so, like, we talked a lot about that or whatever. Eventually, I was like, okay, let's let's try it, you know. And we did a show, and I didn't drink and I didn't die. Mm-hmm. And it was just started to kind of put some of those together. <clears throat> um, and I think that was in, that would have been in 07. Okay. Our original guitar player was doing a band called Monsters Are Waiting that were starting to like do well and get like buzz and shit. So he was doing that. We had a friend of ours come in and play guitar for a couple years. But yeah, it took me a really long time to find my voice, not like my singing voice, but like creatively. Mm-hmm figure out who and what I was after after getting sober. And there were a lot of just complicated interpersonal things with the band that I had to like figure out that I even got wrong in sobriety mm-hmm. that I overcompensated for, um, overcorrected for. I was still motivated by guilt sometimes. So yeah. I would like seed ground creatively when I shouldn't have kind of thing. Yep. Yeah, but it's, I mean, this all checks out for the journey that you go on when you get sober because I feel like I'm still trying to figure out who the fuck I am and who am I on the radio? What do I want to contribute? What do I want to say? And I mean, I can only imagine how difficult that is when you're just trying to figure that out in your life and then you're also trying to figure out what that looks like musically also, you know? Yeah, yeah. I feel like the music that you guys have been making and putting out singles last year and this year are super interesting. It's like, you know, like I, I like it, you know, it's, it's completely different from what you used to do, but it's like, of course it is, you know, but it's almost like, I guess it kind of reminds me of like Lou Reed or like Mm -hmm. Iggy Pop, like kind of like in that vein, which I love. Yep. Same. Are you just like, fuck it. Let's just do whatever we want. Yeah, we're basically treating our band as a side project, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> which is like kind of interesting. Um, I've become friends with Steve Albini from Twitter oh, too. Oh wow! And that's a big deal. Yeah, it's pretty wild. And so he's he a, produced like Nirvana. Yeah. Who else? Oh man, uh, PJ Harvey. Oh wow. Uh, Bush. Oh wow. Um, uh-huh. I mean, he has an endless list of credits as yeah. as an engineer. Like, um, my mind is blanking right now, but the Pixies. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. But he and Jake Flores, who I was talking about earlier, both are kind of of this mindset that if you're a creative person, you should have a job, mm-hmm. like a day job, basically. 
so that your art can remain uncompromised because under capitalism, if that's not the case, then you're going to follow the incentives or the temptation to will often prove greater than your true north or yeah. whatever. It, uh, we kind of look at, John and I, our guitar player and I, at the old catalog as the day job in a way. You know, it's like it's by it's playing those songs that allows us to do this new thing. Mm -hmm. And instead of separating them and having them be two different entities, we're just calling it Eve Six. Yeah. You know? Because why not? Why go through the trouble of starting a whole other side project and having to promote that when you can just be like, this is what we're doing now? Yeah. And it's also a more interesting kind of art project to me to take this thing that is known as this thing and just piss on it. Yeah. In a way. <laughs> <laughs> or like, and you know what? That's putting yeah. it the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, not, like, it's not even pissing on it. It's just, but in a it's way, just, destroy it. In a way, destroy yeah, it. Yeah. But like, but but it's but, like it's just evolution. That's yeah. like that's literally all it is. You're yeah. just like I was 17 when I wrote Heart in a Blender. Now, you know, I'm whatever. Yeah. And writing whatever the hell I want to that feels good. But it's good music. Thank it's you. really good. Yeah, I mean, just, we love it. And yeah. we're, we're I mean, we're having a really good time doing this thing. Um, whenever I hear bands say that, it always begs the question, well, why weren't you always doing that? You know? And I I haven't even be, been able to like adequately answer that question. I, I sort of could, but it would probably take for forever, mm -hmm. you know, because when you're part of like a major label machine and stuff like that, and you're you're having commercial success, and there's other other people are paying their bills because of your rock band and yep. stuff, it's that incentive start to get skewed thing happens you know yeah well and you have so much <clears throat> pressure on you from so many different areas and you're young and mm -hmm. you and like how can you not think well i need it to sound like this song because yes. that's how we got big like we need it to sound like streamlined mm -hmm. you know because i do think that that's realistic yeah. you know like in in familiarizing the public with kind of who you are and what you're about and then maybe later on getting to like play around with different sounds but it's hard to get the public to stay on board with you yeah i mean especially today especially today yeah it's like throw bands away. used throw to be away. allowed to like you know completely change and be yeah, virtually unrecognizable from record to record. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the Beatles did that. Yeah, like y you you can't do that today and expect to have continued commercial success for the most part. Yep. I'm sure there are some exceptions, but for the most part, if you want to have continued commercial success, you need to kind of do the same thing over mm -hmm. and over again. Oh, totally. Or it's like people don't even care in general. They're just like on to the next thing, yeah. on to the next thing. Like there's no sense of like loyalty to artists anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I would say one of the artists that's really lucky to be able to kind of do whatever they want to do is like Harry Styles. Mm -hmm. You know, like I have just been like, like I love him, yeah. but I've been so shocked by everything like how different everything is but it's like he's got those locked in yeah boy band like fans that will just follow him into whatever he does and but that's like such a rare he's also extremely entertaining and, and extremely inventive. good looking yeah so there's all those factors yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's like the best yeah you know but it's yeah it's like it's hard nowadays so i'm just all like i i don't know bands like always ask me questions and i'm like i literally have no fucking clue but i just always feel like as an artist you just always have to follow like you said your north star like yeah whatever feels right and organic and good for you like that's what you have to do yes uh, yeah i mean not compromising that i think is always the way to go but there are situations in the life of a band where that's really difficult to do or even seems impossible you know Thanks for watching. For more Seven Words podcasts, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment.